Our first ever American Music Festival is a celebration which is continuing on the 27th and 29th and concluding on November 3rd and 5th. And during that time, we're going to explore a wide range of uh, American music. For our second weekend, uh, when we're down in Kodak Hall, in our main home, we have a real, um, real smorgasbord of, of American music to offer. Um, we open with a piece by the great film composer John Williams, who of course wrote Star Wars, Superman, uh, Indiana Jones, so many amazing uh, works. But he's also uh, a great composer of music uh, that's not necessarily on the, on the big screen. Uh, and he wrote uh, for Leonard Bernstein, another iconic American musical figure, um, a special piece called For Lenny, uh, which was in honor of his 70th birthday. Uh, and it features little snippets of uh, many of Bernstein's uh, greatest works. After we open with the John Williams uh, piece in honor of Leonard Bernstein, we play another great American composer, uh, which is George Gershwin. His I Got Rhythm Variations is a very familiar work uh, to many people. The, the timeless tune, you know, I Got Rhythm, it features a great uh, piano solo, and the Russo will be performing with us. We're very excited about that. The piece that we're uh, featuring of Leonard Bernstein comes from his only film score, which is on the waterfront. So we have John Williams, who's a great film composer, who wrote this piece in tribute to Leonard Bernstein, and we're featuring some of his film music from On the Waterfront. He made a suite uh, of all the best music in On the Waterfront, and um, that's also survived as well as the film with Marlon Brando. So there's a lot of interesting connections there. Um, and the music, the music is full of uh, that Bernstein zest and pep, but it's also got a little bit of darkness in it, um, so it's at the end of the first half. Uh, then the second half of the program is, is a little bit, little bit more serious because we, um, we're going to be performing John Adams' Dr. Atomic Symphony. John Adams' Dr. Atomic Symphony comes from the full opera titled Dr. Atomic, and it deals with the Manhattan Project and uh, Oppenheimer and his, his inner struggle um, throughout the entire process and sort of his crisis of conscience, uh, knowing what he was unleashing on the world when he split the atom. You have to remember uh, when they were working on this project, some people thought that the, um, the splitting of an atom would ignite the atmosphere and the entire earth would be destroyed. I mean, that's how dramatic this was for them back then. Uh, and John Adams' music captures that energy, that, that uncertainty, but also that, that amazing um, work that was going toward. The whole work is just so dramatic and so compelling, I think. Uh, and we're going to set it up with a work uh, of Charles Ives, who's one of the first composers uh, to really be, you know, on the scene as an American. Uh, and his piece, The Unanswered Question, is fascinating because it takes three ideas and puts them together. So you get the scene set by the strings first, very placid, very calm, very peaceful. Um, then the trumpet asks the question, and then the woodwinds answer. And each time the answer comes back, it gets more fraught. It gets uh, more active in the answer until uh, it's almost like the person answering the question finally gives up and then the answer sort of dissolves. So it leaves us in a, at a point where I think we're um, uh, really set up to experience the explosion in the Dr. Atomic Symphony. And it's going to be a great, uh, great balance and I think it, it complements the first half of the program which is much lighter uh, very nicely and again it's a perfect example of, of the vast scope of styles and themes and elements that go into the American musical canon.